Okay, so real quick, I want to do a short video going over installing a C compiler on a Windows environment. I'm going to be using Windows 11. I'm going to be installing a version of the LLVM CLang compiler geared to work with MinGW as opposed to the traditional MSVC compiler. I MSVC is fine, but I dislike having to set up the entire Visual Studio suite and everything that goes with doing it. So I generally find it a bit more straightforward and intuitive to do a standalone LLVM compiler because you can just run it straight from the terminal, no hoops to jump through. Uh, it's probably easier ways of setting up MSVC, but I generally just find this to be a very simplistic approach. I actually wrote my own installer for it. It's pulling from the actual original open source repo, which I'll have linked below, which is the LLVM MySpinGW repo. So just there'll be a link down to that, a link to the command I have for my installer, and, and maybe a link to my installer as well. So this is going to be a lot of things in the video description, so make sure you look at them. Without further ado, I'm just going to swap over to the desktop real quick and take a look. So, again, I'm on a pretty vanilla install of Windows 11. Only thing I really have is OBS, custom wallpaper. I have Visual Studio installed, more on that later. But I also be using Terminal. If you are on Windows 10, which I know this will work on Windows 10, you'll want to use PowerShell or Command Prompt. You just need to have some version of PowerShell installed. So I know this works on Windows 11 and Windows 10. I cannot verify for anything before that though. Now, if we run clang minus minus version, you'll notice that clang is not recognized as the name of commandlet, function, script file, or operable program. And that's just because I don't have it installed. I don't have it included in the system path. So it, it just doesn't really exist. So what I'm going to do, real quick, is find my command that I've made, which simply calls PowerShell, which is why you need PowerShell installed. It is going to bypass execution privileges, so if you don't have it set up to run scripts, that is not a problem. This singular command by itself will bypass the execution privileges and everything. So, you don't have to worry about setting that up yourself. This should do it for you just again for this so it doesn't interfere with any security features down the road. But then essentially it just downloads a string which is from my repo with the LLVM NGW installer as a PowerShell script and just downloads it from the internet. So let's go ahead and run that. And you'll notice some progress bars like that one right there. And then you see, please wait, link to the actual LLVM NGW x86 archive. So this is the uh, this is a source repo for the compiler itself that I'm using. Currently you can see in this progress bar it is extracting the archive to C users Devin, this will be dependent on your system dot utils LLVM minus NGW dot zip. So we are extracting this zip folder to our .utils folder that we're making. And we are going to place the bin directory in the archive in the system path, which is where the clang and other executables are located. So, if I run clang version now, let's see what happens. You can see it. If you run the clang minus minus version, after you install, right after you see LLVM MySpinGW is installed, and it shows up that red text saying that it's not commandlet, operable program, exit out of your terminal like so, and then just reopen it, run it, and it should be good. I know for sure on Windows 10, I had to log out of my session and then log back in to properly recognize in the system so if you don't see it initially don't just be patient try closing out of the terminal maybe log out of the session maybe reboot that helps but if it's at least got the files in the proper folder everything should be fine i know for certain this works on windows 11 and windows 10 
I'm pretty certain it should work on Windows 8 and Windows 7 as long as PowerShell is installed. Beyond that, I'm not sure. Okay. So in addition to this, I also have Visual Studio Code installed on the system. So I can take a look at some code and compile it real quick. So I'm just gonna do file, folder, leave my stuff as a documents. You're gonna notice something. I have temperature and another temperature. This is always extracting the archive, the .zip folder in Windows. It created two, which is really annoying, but it's fine. So now I have these three files and you might recognize these from the last video, which I'll have uh, put up as a card in the top right but it is from the coding the function coding session so it's my temperature conversion so you're gonna see pop-ups down here it's a vanilla install of visual studio so there's a few pop-ups i need to just close out of but this is the main file here we have our header file which contains our actual function prototypes and here we have the actual function definitions what I care about is opening up this new terminal. Now this is just a built-in terminal in VS Code. You can tell that I'm running PowerShell right here. And you can set the path I'm at. I am C, users, Devin, documents, temperature, temperature. Again, this is just the remnant of the archive extraction. But if I do see like my final version, just like previously, I get all the same information, it's exactly what I want. So what I'm going to do is clang to actually call it. Um, before I do clang, I'm going to run ls. And it's going to show all the files in my current directory. Which is main.c, tent.c, tent.h, which is exactly what I want. So clang dot slash, I'm going to start typing main for main.c. I'm going to hit tab at this point and it's going to auto complete it out dot slash tmp or te tab auto completes the temp.c so dot slash is current directory and then a file that exists in our current directory and then temp.c i press enter you notice at the top left a.exe has been made so if i run that a.exe like so it has my actual temperatures so I ran just fine, just like we were testing in the previous video, but now I'm running it from Windows, and it's not too bad, honestly. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. So that's all I've got for setting up a C compiler. It's generally not too bad, at least in this approach. This is my preferred approach. There is Microsoft's official tooling, but I find it a little bit cumbersome to deal with. This is pretty straightforward, honestly. It just installs an archive into a folder, you add that to your system path, and all of a sudden you have all VM compilers, and that's pretty much all you need. So hopefully this was helpful. Hope you learned something. See you next video.